Hello everyone, it is I, uh, Kakaluak here, and I filmed this video a couple of times through a nicer camera, but it didn't really work out too much because I don't have a tripod or anything, so I'm just going to film this here on my computer like usual because I can see if I'm looking at the camera properly or not, and it's just a lot less stressful, so... Yeah, so I, basically what I have here is I've collected throughout the couple of years uh, a few pretty nice CDs and cassettes and some DVDs as well. So I'm just going to show you guys the, uh, all those things. Um, there's going to be no vinyls in this uh, in this review. It's just going to be a lot of CDs and different kinds of media. And most of it is just of stuff I've been given to as presents over the years or stuff that I bought in line. It's kind of a mix of a whole bunch of different stuff. So we're just going to jump into it here. And I'm going to start out with uh, all of my uh, Buckethead CDs that I have so far. So I bought from uh, Travis Dickerson, a fellow musician that Buckethead works with. Uh, he has a website. And I bought a couple of CDs from him uh, over the over my college years, and uh, the first one we have is probably my favorite one, is Buckethead and Travis Stickerson, uh, this uh, Chicken Noodle Soup album that they made, Chicken Noodles, to be specific, and this one is basically just Travis Stickerson on the keyboard, Buckethead playing the guitar like he usually does, and the whole CD is really nice, it's very peaceful music, it's kind of a refreshing uh, a refreshing piece from all the shredding that Big B does, and it's not quite acoustic either, it's very jazzy, like much of the other works that they did together. Probably the jazziest one that uh, was done was uh, between Buckethead and Travis Dickerson would be the, the Dragons of Eden album. This one is a pretty cool piece that they did together, and I really like the cover too. I don't have the CD, oops. I don't have the CD inside right now, but that's what it looks like. It's in my uh, radio right now, but um, yeah, so that is uh, Dragons of Eden. Not my favorite one that they've done, but it's still a really nice album, and I do like to listen to it from time to time. Another interesting thing that I got, and this was not a Travis Dickerson project, but this is uh, Buckethead's first group, one of the first groups he was in, is the Deli Creeps. I got a CD, a brand new CD of the Deli Creeps. And as you can see, there's, I believe, Max and Bob right up there. There's Pinch Face, and there's Buckethead sitting there in the, in the meats, in the meats aisle, and under the, under, in the meat container right there. And, yeah, this is a really cool album. It's one of the few tapes or recordings that the group ever did. You can find a lot of the live footage online, but there isn't really a lot out there in terms of their material when it comes to physical copies of things. And for all of you like Primus fans, you probably like these guys. That goes, it's this very, uh, it goes still along the lines of that farmyard gore sort of themed stuff. And that it, whenever I listen to this and listen to Primus, there's quite a lot of similarities, but they're still kind of their own thing, and they make some pretty cool music, so it's kind of cool that I was able to, to find this and that they're still making new ones of this because there isn't too many of these around anymore, I don't think. Um, so going on here, and this is just uh, Buckethead's solo work. This is just stuff that he did on his own, I believe. So it's just his own solo projects, and that would be his uh, Death Cube K stuff. I have two Death Cube K CDs. I have Tunnel. And I also have Dreamatorium down there, which I'll show you quickly here. Um, so there's the back. If you open it up here. Now I need to be careful to make sure the CD doesn't fall out, because the teeth in the middle are broken here, but um, that is the middle right there. And, yeah, this is a pretty interesting album. Like, what the only way I can explain Death UK is that it sounds a lot like uh, Buckethead's uh, version of Halloween music. Like, he make it's a lot of, like, creepy sounds and noises and weird things that he does with his guitar, and he makes this really weird soundscape that is just incredibly weird and creepy to listen to. And I know a lot of people don't like this era of Buckethead Pikes, but he also made a lot of, like, Halloween Pikes, as he called them. 
and it's basically music that kind of goes along the lines of this. Maybe not quite as good as his Death UK releases, but um, it's kind of like that same sort of lane, I guess. So, the next Death UK that I have is a Dreamatorium, and this one I think I just got used off of like Amazon or something. It wasn't new, but it's still a nice CD. And, uh, yeah, so there's the inside there, and there's what appears to be a space on the back cover there. And this one is actually uh, probably one of the most unique of all the Death UK releases that Buckethead has done. Because Buckethead, I think he's done like three or four of these, I don't remember the other one or two that he's done off the top of my head. But this one has a really great song in it called uh, Maggot Dream, I believe. And obviously most of the CD is like very like weird like robotic sounds and lots of like weird creepy like Halloween-ish type of uh, instrumentals but the one song uh, Maggot Dream on there is one of his probably among one of his most emotional and um, best a uh, slow um, acoustic like the slow instrumentals I should say I wouldn't call it acoustic it's just a really really cool um, beautiful song that was composed by Buckethead and probably among one of his best. So if anyone wants to have a cool little song in there that other than just this creepy weird experimental stuff, definitely check that one out as a starter if you want to get into the, the, Death, the Death Cube K series because it is quite an adventure going through that stuff and it, and to be honest I think especially the one that I showed you Dreamatorium aged pretty well on me because I do still really like that one to this day. So going on here I have not Buckethead uh, CDs, but I have DVDs that I uh, obtained um, pretty recently here. And one of them, probably his most recent one that was made, is a music video that he did, uh, 1031, Buckethead Costume and Mask. And this one was on his website for just, I think, a few dollars. And, um, yeah, so this is kind of a interesting release that he did, because he usually doesn't have too many... Uh, DVDs that he releases, but the the music video you can currently find online, I think, under, um, probably under one of the YouTubers that posts a lot of his stuff, but, yeah, so it's a really cool music video, it's just kind of this, uh, it just shows a lot of scenes from Bugged Headland, and it's playing, and it's kind of just a cool montage of all that stuff, and I believe it's from his recent, uh, studio album, too, so, that's just another fun fact to put in there. Uh, so the next thing that I have is I have, uh, I have the first and second uh, Young Buckethead DVDs here. And if you look closely, there's all of his weird sketches that he does around the front. There's more of it on the back and some pictures as well. Um, up the here is, uh, I think, a performance he was doing with the Deli Creeps. He was another one of them where he's technically unmasked, sort of. He's not really, though. He's still wearing a clear mask, so it's hard to really see his face. But that's an interesting scene that you see in this uh, video of him just kind of messing around and doing weird things, kind of in that, um, in that moment. And those, I think, I think the other two are just some more Deli Creeps uh, performances. I can tell because he's wearing, I believe, like the meat apron in all of these. So these are definitely more earlier performances that he did. So yeah, this is a really interesting uh, DVD. I don't know if I've watched the entire thing because a lot of it's just live performances that he's done, which are really cool, but I don't like to watch live performances of acts that I don't, that I want to see more and more because I don't want to lose the magic sometimes, but I'm pretty sure the earlier ones that he's, had, that he's done are pretty different and he doesn't play songs that he plays today, so I'm probably going to eventually get through this entire thing because it is a really cool uh, piece in history of the Buckethead uh, lore in his musical career. So I have the second one as well, and it's just kind of a different color, same sort of layout though, his sketches in the front and back, and as you can see there's more of his performances that he's been doing, and this is a picture of him actually doing his first double interview, um, and this one I believe was an interview that he did with his dad, and it was probably the only interview that he did with the exception of the one that was just done recently. So he basically had a couple decades worth gap of any kind of really long-term official interview that he's done. 
And even in this one, um, he is kind of in character, so you don't really get too many answers or anything about him. But it is a really interesting thing to see, and I like to watch it from time to time because it's kind of just an interesting uh, conversation to watch. Uh, so yeah, so there's the inside right there. Nothing too, nothing too amazing. Just kind of this, one of those weird, probably his own hand that he's drawn right there because it's all long and weird, weird looking. But yeah, so that's the second DVD of the Young Buckethead series. Definitely for any fans who like to watch that, I believe this stuff is online too of both of those uh, DVDs. So if you're really interested in uh, checking it out, they're on YouTube somewhere. So, as we uh, go move along here, I actually have a couple, I have a pair of four cassettes that I have, and I got these in Florida, and they were just for maybe like a dollar each, they were really cheap, and I believe all of them work, by, which is pretty amazing. So the first one that I have is, uh, Jethro Tull's Aqualung, and I have uh, just a little cassette of his music, and it's just kind of a just an old cassette, and I, as I said before, I did play a few of these, so they still work, and they're still, they're still doing their thing, so it's kind of interesting that I was able to get my hands especially on some of these, because I don't listen to Jethro Tull's music too much, but it is kind of fun when I find some of his stuff and just check it out, so. And another thing that's interesting is that these used to smell really awful when I bought them, but now they smell like, they don't smell like anything, really, they're just fine, so that's kind of a good thing that they don't smell like crap anymore, like old mothballs, because whenever you touch that stuff, it gets all over your hands and it's not, and it's not good, so. So moving on here, we have uh, a Beach Boys cassette, and this one I just, I believe it just has a few of the hits on it, it's not like a full album or anything like that. Um, the cassette inside, it's pretty worse, it's a little banged up, but it's not too bad, it works. And it just, I don't know, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then uh, the other thing that I got was I have, and I don't actually know if I've listened to this one yet, but it's the least beat of all the cassettes that I have. And it is uh, the Thundering Rainstorm. It's just a bunch of rainstorm sounds, kind of like some, some ambient or some peaceful listening kind of stuff. And I just bought this because I thought it would be kind of an interesting thing perhaps to meditate to or just to listen to because it's just a weird little tape that has a bunch of nature sounds on it. And then after that, I have probably the coolest release that I've, uh, or the coolest thing that I got from this little cassette haul was I found uh, a Denver March powwow from 86. And this is probably a one of a kind thing that I'll probably never find again because it's just a local little, uh, locally made like cassette that was probably from uh, just an, like a powwow from a very long time ago. And if I can open it up here, and I'll probably uh, add a video uh, later on because there was that, this did work and it did have some interesting stuff on it. So maybe later on show a video of it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So there's just the tape right there. If you take this out, there's kind of some credits on the inside of like all the, of all the bands and everything. Or not the bands, but the groups that were involved and just all that kind of, you know, just some really cool little information, some background information on the performances. So yeah, that, so this is kind of an interesting tape that I got. And I hopefully, and hopefully it will not break or anything because this is a really cool thing that I found. And as I said before, I'll probably never find it again because it's just, just some weird random thing that isn't like an official album or anything like that. It's just some locally made tape, so. So those are all my cassettes. I only had four. So moving on here, I'm going to do my uh, Tool albums. 
because I actually, I bought all of these by myself, like these weren't gifts or anything like that, but I actually uh, have all four Tool albums, and uh, I've probably listened to most of them at least once on these CDs. So the first one that I have, but was, uh, strangely maybe only the second or third one that I bought, but I have uh, the first one which is Undertow, and there's the back right there, and there is the, the inside, and Undertow is probably not my favorite Tool album, but it is definitely um, has some of my favorite songs in it, especially Prison Sex, that one's a pretty good one. Um, and then going on here, the second one, which I believe is called, like, Enema. I'm not entirely sure to pronounce it at this point, but, uh, yeah, so there's the front, there's the back, there's the inside. And this one might be among one of my favorite tool releases, um, and probably my favorite song in here is Third Eye. That's the last track. That one's a pretty, a pretty cool, uh, addition to their discography. I think it's one of their best songs. And then, uh, third one we have here is, I believe, I believe this one's called Lateralist. I'm gonna probably pronounce these wrong a lot because I'm really bad at pronouncing the names of a lot of, uh, Tool albums for some reason. They're always so weird and kind of hard to pronounce at times, but, yeah, so there's the inside. And this one ha actually has a really cool little plastic booklet, which has all the artwork in it, or the layers of the artwork kind of in this cool little book and I'm trying to think of what would be my favorite song from this album and I don't quite remember all the songs in this one I haven't listened to it in ages um yeah it might be like parable or parabola that might be my favorite on this one or maybe the grudge that one's a really good starter track too yeah there's a lot of good songs this album and if I had to choose between the four this one's probably probably up there with the best one but I'm still not entirely sure it's either it's like the the last three that they they have other than undertow are kind of among the best things so it's hard to discern which one's the best which one's the best one they're all pretty good um so the last one I have here and this one's probably the least used um, and this one's a thousand days, and it has, like, the little glass up here, and they have, uh, I think you're supposed to kind of look through them like this, and there's just these weird pictures and stuff, and it's supposed to probably look 3D or something, but it doesn't really work in my eyes, unfortunately, but it is kind of cool that it's set up this way. So, yeah, there's just some artwork there that you can look at. The CDs in there, and... Yeah, I haven't listened to, like, a Thousand Days in a really long time. I need to listen to this one because it's a really good album, but it's just something that I haven't gotten to in a while. Um, probably my favorite song in this one for now because I need to re-listen to it to, to reevaluate it a bit, but it's probably The Pot because that one's a pretty good song. That one's the one that really stood out to me the first few times that I listened to it. Um, so those are all my Tool albums, obviously, because they only made four. And they might make another one this year, but we'll just have to see. Um, so the next a few things that I have, and this one's just kind of on its own, because it's just an artist that I got a really long time ago, and that would be Alice Phoebe Lou's Orbit. And I believe this is an artist, I believe she's from Germany or somewhere in Europe, and she had some really nice, like, acoustic singer-songwriter stuff. And, uh, she got really quite a bit more popular recently, and I really like her work. If anyone out there is really into Aurora, and you like that kind of singing and that sort of music, but maybe a little bit less pop-driven, uh, this would be a really good pick for you, because it, her voice sounds a lot like Aurora. It's not quite the same, but they kind of have the same sort of singing style, but they make very different kinds of music. And, yeah, I've always kind of liked her stuff. And I got this CD, I think, for a really lot of money, because it was before she got kind of big or famous, so I never, and it was before it was on iTunes, too, so I just got the CD because I really liked it, but it was a lot of money shipping it here, so I kind of regret doing it in a way, but it is cool that I have it, so, 
And in the inside here, there's a really nice a booklet. You can see there's just some artwork on the inside here, and there's the song lyrics. And it's just kind of a nice little addition to the CD. And I really like how everything's kind of put together. The nice, pretty, uh, colorful, eye-catching co cover there, and I don't know, just a nice little uh, CD on its own. So that is the only Alice B.B. Lou CD that I have. I don't know if she's released any music recently, I'd have to look that up. I might update on that if that is important at all, but that's the only CD, the only album I have of hers currently. So going on here, I have another just single CD that's kind of on its own here. And this is something I got for maybe like 50 cents at a, um, at a a second hand store in Florida and it's just some really weird CD called Meft and it says Wasting Time. So I'm assuming that's the band name is Meft and Wasting Time is the album name. But it it's just like it's literally just a burnt on C D and everything's written in Sharpie and they literally took like the C D like the original C D paper that's inside and then wrote the stuff on the back and then the stuff that and then the the of all the songs are literally just taped on the back on a little sticker and the the last one is fuck the greyhound bus and i think that's pretty funny because I, I can understand the feelings of whomever made this with just by the the title of that song but um i have another uh mystery cd they call them with johnny cash covers so um i'll probably want to to listen to both of these and maybe post it live of me just listening to them and seeing what the quick is on here because they're, they're, I just find these random things all the time and I can't help but take them because they just look so weird and you're curious of what's on them and it's probably gonna be something incredibly stupid but you know it's just something that that your curiosity gets the best of you you know so yeah I'll, def I'll probably do like a little uh listening party or first listen uh streaming as you as uh as i would put it maybe not streaming but just a video that i'd upload later because i have the johnny cash covers one that i have and i have this one that i'll probably listen to so that is the last of the mystery cds so far that i have so uh let's just move on here with some other stuff and uh these uh are two cds that i got uh pretty recently and that would be and i have a vinyl of one of these so i have uh, Jack, both uh, Hilo and Pop Boo from Jack Stauber, and these are just uh, two kind of cool little paper CDs that were sent to me a while back, and I think Jack Stauber used to sell these on his website, but he doesn't really anymore because I think they sold out, but he might make some new ones, and I hope he makes a vinyl of this in the Micro Pop series that he's doing right now. So for any of you who are unfamiliar with Jack Stauber, I made a video on him, or not a video on him, but I reviewed the uh, the vinyl of this album earlier on. And uh, he just is a YouTuber that makes a lot of really cool kind of like synth pop kind of music. And he has a series that is going on called Micropop, and it's probably some of the best stuff that he's made yet. It's this really experimental kind of synth pop music with all these weird influences combined uh and he is um making just these kind of groups of songs that he's then uh, gradually uploading to his spotify into the internet so and he's planning to make a couple volumes of records that just have these individual songs on them and uh he he had like distribution issues or something so he's not entirely sure when he's going to make these vinyls or when he's going to make the collection happen but i hope it does because the music that he's been making is probably the, some of the best stuff that, yet that he's made, and it's really good. So, we'll just have to keep our fingers crossed in that one. So, let me see here. What else do I have? I just have a whole bunch of random stuff screwed about here. Um, let's see. I'm just grouping some stuff together so I don't, so I'm not scrambling. So probably what I'm going to show, and these are just some, probably the most recent things that I have. Uh, Shopco was going out of business, if any of you, whether if any of you are aware or not. But, uh, so I just bought some CDs for kind of cheap, at one of my local ones. So I have uh, Beyonce's Lemonade. I have Casey Musgrave's Pageant Material. 
and I have uh, Carly Rae Jepsen, Jepsen's uh, Motion. And I listened to this one for the first time because I heard that it was really good, and it was really good, so it will definitely be a, a listen for many years to come because it is a very good album. And I heard her recent album that she made um, was also pretty good too. It's a lot like the one that I just listened to. Um, so then I have Lemonade, and this one is another album, and I can't, unfortunately, I can't get the CD out of the case right now, like, I can't, there's two of them, and I can't quite get one of the CDs out, unfortunately, um, so that's kind of a problem, but hopefully I can get it out so I can give it a listen, and if not, I'll just listen to it on the internet, I guess, because I have Spotify, so it's not a huge problem, but, uh, then I have Casey Musgraves pageant material, and this is, I've listened to this one actually all the way through, and it's pretty nice. It's a pretty cool, poppy, uh, cheerful, kind of playful uh, country album, and I don't listen to a lot of country, but I do kind of like her music. I do like to listen to it sometimes. I think she's a really good songwriter. Just a really cool, just a really cool uh, country artist in general. And so those are just the three things that I got pretty recently. Um, and I usually don't buy CDs, but that was kind of an exception in those kind of situations. Um, so going on here, I have just another collection of things. I actually have, I think these were all gifts that I got, or I bought uh, at least two of them were gifts for my brother. So one Christmas I got the Pixies and Portishead for my brother, and he just gave them some, uh, his recommendations because he thought they were both really good albums, which they are. I don't listen to Portishead a lot, but I do like to listen to their music once in a while because it is kind of an interesting group and they have a very interesting sound and aesthetic when it comes to their music. And their performances are pretty cool to watch too. Um, I also have the Pixies, and this one is an album that I love to listen to all the time. Like, it's definitely a really, really, really good album that I believe probably came out in like, yeah, probably like in the 90s or the 80s. Just a really, really, a really good uh, Pixies album. And I don't know why I haven't listened to more of the Pixies, because I'm, I'm just one of those people that is out and about all the time, and I'm constantly listening to new music. So, that's, this is Death Portishead and the Pixies, though, two artists that for some reason I haven't uh, dug into too much, and I probably should, because... This is obviously the, one of the best albums, but the other ones are also really good. And the same goes with Portishead. So the next thing that I have here, I sort of got as a gift and I sort of didn't. I bought the deluxe version of this CD as, like, for myself, and then I got the same one as a gift, so. And that would be, uh, Bourne's Dopamine. I used to be kind of a big fan of Bourne's a while ago. I probably, like, mid, late high school. It wasn't too long ago. I'm not really into him as much anymore. But he did make this uh, this album quite a long time ago, and it was pretty good. It was pretty banging. I'm definitely not a huge indie pop person, but I did like this, his stuff quite a bit at the time. And I have listened to some of his stuff a little bit more recently, and it is it is nice, I guess. It's not probably the most... I've listened to a lot of other stuff at this point, and it's not my favorite thing in the world, but it is pretty nice. It is a nice album, so... So that is uh, the only Born CD that I have currently, and I only have, let's see here, some of this isn't even mine at this point. I think I got this at a second hand store, I never listened to it, but I probably will eventually because I just, because it is supposedly a pretty decent uh, album, and yeah, I've never listened to Incubus before, honestly. I don't know if I really like it or not, but I just I just found it somewhere and I found it interesting. So I have oh yeah, and I have another Jeff Toll C D. You can see there. It's probably another second hand store thing, but I'm pretty sure I have listened to this and I did enjoy it. And I believe this probably has a bunch of his hits on it. It's not an official album like Aqualung was. Um, and this one isn't actually mine, but I do have a really nice, uh, Pink Floyd compilation of the earlier music. And I believe a lot of Sid Barrett is on here. And, uh, yeah, so that's the inside. I believe there's a little, uh, 
yeah, there's a little sheet, so I should say a little booklet in here. It's a lot of just stuff, a lot of pictures, just a lot of stuff uh, scrambled in there. So, yeah, this is kind of an interesting CD. I haven't listened to it a lot, but it is, uh, and this isn't actually mine. I'm pretty sure this is my brother's, so, and it's just in with my stuff for some reason. So, yeah, so that's just a little CD that I have of early Pink Floyd music. And the only thing I really have, other than that, would be uh, just some uh, Merge record sampler that I got from a record store in Florida a while ago. And I, I, I don't think I've listened to this at all. But, uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool that I, that the, uh, the record store that I sometimes go to does sell some of these really, just these CDs for free, these little samplers. So, yeah, so that's pretty much all what it is. And, yeah, so after that, I am done with everything. I don't, I have another Born CD that I got as a gift, so I have two of those, but I'm not going to show you that because I, I already showed you the first one. Uh, but, yeah, that's, like, the only, uh, yeah, like, that's the only, that's all that I have so far. I'm probably, I'm not a huge CD collector, and I've kind of accumulated these over the years, even before I started collecting, because that was kind of the only media I could play it from. So I don't really have a lot of CDs and I don't listen to them a lot, but it is kind of nice to have them in the car sometimes if you don't have an aux cord or you do, or you do, or the the physical copy of it, but there's no vinyls or any other, or there isn't any, uh, with any cassettes or vinyls of that. And maybe upload it to the internet if you if you're willing to do that but yeah so that's kind of the only uh few reasons why i really get cds i'm not a huge cd person anymore but sometimes it is nice when you get when you can get stuff for just very cheap if there's a sale on there's like a sale and there might be something interesting that you find so i will be releasing uh another video that won't be anything like review or anything like that. It'll actually be, uh, it'll be about another artist that I'm really into. And yeah, so that's going, it's going to be a little bit uh, different. And I hope, I hope fully I will be able to, to release that video pretty soon. I'm kind of editing it and working on it. But yeah, so that is it for my uh, CD review today. And I hope you all you all doing well. I hope you all have a nice day. This is Cock of the Rock 14 here, and I hope all of your, your vinyl, city, cassette, collecting adventures go well. <laughs>